Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Geek Bites Podcast, and I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm Edgardo Costa. And every single week on the podcast, folks, we bring you the round of the week's best geek and tech news. We discuss that news, of course, anything else we happen to be interested in that week. And this week, uh, we have a ton of great stuff. Before Big we get into show. that, though, I want to give a quick shout out to our new Patreon supporters uh, that have joined and, and actually given us money to do this podcast every single week uh, to keep it ad-free and, of course, uh, free to everyone who wants to watch it and listen to it, um, including John. Uh, that's all he said on his on his Patreon post. It's just as John. I love you, John. <laughs> and, uh, Willie Williams no, and Michael awesome. Reynolds, uh, three new Patreon supporters plus one generous donor who you know basically around Christmas time gives us a nice donation on PayPal and says, "Hey, just do something Christmassy for the month." Uh, and so, I have my hat, have a nice Christmassy hat. Ordered some nice Christmas sweaters for the rest of the month. So we'll see if we get them in time for the next show or not. Uh, but thank you guys for always being so supportive of our our little. Thing we do uh just kind of goof around uh talking to each other and, and geeking out about stuff oh yeah well i think so i already said i love you john mm. so i love you willie i love you michael and the generous generous anonymous is love you too <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys okay uh now we have a couple geek news articles this week including tumblr losing its audience um new superhero movies being developed the game award winners uh no more rocket of course movie trailer shadows and much much more before we get on now we're g- gonna go into geek news of course genie style bam yeah <laughs> And in geek news, we're going to begin with uh, Tumblr. Tumblr is our first story of the week just because it's more tech oriented. Uh, Tumblr announced uh, this last week that it will ban all adult content starting on December the 17th. Uh, as users logged into their accounts, they're basically going to be shown like a red banner of, of what's essentially going to be flagged as being inappropriate or um, adult content, I guess. Uh, but the algorithms that are apparently flagging these things automatically just aren't really doing a good job job um there are some really weird things like people who are fully clothed drawings of dragons um uh, there's uh, anime art that's not nude in any way shape or form and also like garfield garfield was apparently tagged as adult content um on tumblr so there's some very weird things in addition to actual adult content and but this is definitely a big um move for tumblr to ban adult content it's, it's, a, it's a it's a big shift in their particular market and a lot of analysts are actually saying that this might be the death of the platform because that's kind of that freedom of expression that that, that ability to to show adult content um on tumblr was kind of its big draw i've never used tumblr have you um well yeah most uh, mostly for looking at videos and posts and stuff but like yeah it's it's not my go-to platform mm-hmm. um but yeah it, it is definitely also a place that a lot of like um adult content creators will use to display um, their material for fans. And um, a lot of posts on the internet are like, oh, what other platforms can we use for for people who are going to like pay us money on PayPal or whatever for, for the content we're creating just because it's more of an adult nature and mm-hmm. um, Pornhub was like we we, we can we, we can set that up for you they were very happy <laughs> yeah. to be like yeah no we will absolutely create you like special pages yeah. um, links to people who can pay you and like oh, okay and they'll give you ad revenue apparently yeah. so yeah oh and April uh, says Fiona says hi she's so excited to see oh. you on on the phone so there you go there's your viewer yeah. folks live you uh, know who else is joining in a Tumblr of not allowing any porn? Uh, who's that? Starbucks. Starbucks. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Starbucks has also recently implemented um, a policy that they will not allow pornography or any adult content over their free Wi-Fi. That's you, right, folks. You have to pay for it now. And you know what Pornhub did to retaliate? Oh, yeah. I think they, they banned Starbucks yeah, from, from their, their offices. offices. Yeah. Like, oh, no. <laughs> but I can't know. Uh, was it Dunkin' Donuts now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. still, uh, for a lot of... Come on. It's the internet. There's so yeah, many yeah. porn a- accesses yeah. to it. I think it was just because it's very big, very commercial. I think it's more along like there are very few platforms that allow people who make adult content mm-hmm. uh, to to have a stable place. Like um, Patreon is, is kind of a place where you can do that. Mm-hmm. But there's also... Uh, very much of like a, a certain group of people who are always like, oh no, you 
you were, were against that. Uh, and and it's, it's kind of an iffy situation, uh, depending on the city you live in, federal laws, and things yeah. like that. So it's a very like complicated situation for platforms and also for content creators. Uh, and it's, it kind of depends on your state, depends on, on where you live, what country. Uh, so, I, I mean, I understand what Tumblr is doing, but at the same time, like, oh, that seems like you know, taking away people's freedom of expression and their ability to, to make money doing what they're doing and when it's not hurting anybody. Yeah, it's one Unless of, that's what they're into. It's pretty much, yeah. Um, I, I'm all for the freedom of speech and whatnot, doing it with your own body or whatever you stick in your body. Um, but, hey, you, whatever you got to do to make a buck pretty much nowadays. Right. But, uh, once again, there's so many outlets, so there many are. things. Like I, I don't think a lot of users are complaining necessarily. It's just more like creators. Like oh, not yeah. Having to give that access to the people who are actually, you know, helping them make a living. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next story off of porn. Uh, we're mm-hmm. going to go into the Game Awards. So we have the Game Awards were very recently done. Uh, a lot of winners, a lot of losers. Um, there's a huge long list of things, including Game of the Year, uh, best action game, best action adventure game, best role playing game, and everything else you can think of, including narration, audio work. The big winners essentially came down to Red Dead Redemption, who won more awards, I think, than anybody else, including best score, best audio design, best narration, best performance art for Michael. Um, Michael Dean, I forget what his last name is. He's the guy from The Walking Dead. Uh, oh, mo- uh, Michael D. Morgan, I think, something. Mm-hmm. Um, but God of War won the big ones, including Game of the Year and Best Action Adventure Game. So. It was very, like, the Oscar-wise. Like, sort there's, of. Uh, there's, there's one movie that gets all the awards, Best Cinematography, Best Actor, Best This, but didn't get, you know, Movie of the Year. Doesn't get Best Picture. Doesn't get Best Picture. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of what this was. It was definitely a heated race between God of War and... and, and um, Red Dead Redemption. The one that did get the biggest snub, though, was Spider Man. Yes, that was very odd that I didn't really see it anyway. It's a, it's a very good game, um, very good story. But I guess uh, people felt that these other games uh, were a little more, at least in the categories that they were going in. Like, you can kind of call it an action game, but it doesn't really fit in with anything else. Uh, maybe a role playing game, I guess, but there were definitely more straightforward role playing games here as well. Um, so I, I kind of see that it doesn't really fit anywhere, but for it not to be nominated at all seems a little weird. Yeah. Uh, at least to me, like there's definitely games that I've never heard of that uh, like, that won awards or just got nominated, yeah. or games that I thought, oh, that's not really amazing. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I think the, the two big ones for me are definitely going to be Red Dead Redemption Two and and God of War. Although I think God of War is the better game just because it's a little more approachable. It's more fast paced. There's more action and stuff, uh, but the narration, the story is just as good as I think Red Dead Redemption. And the one people that are very happy that got a war one best picture, a uh, best picture, excuse me, best game, the, of course, PlayStation. Cause it's a PlayStation exclusive. <laughs> I was saying like, Oh, <laughs> the makers of the game. Well, or, of course that, yeah. yeah. unless like the other people, Oh, we're just happy to be nominated. No, sure, you, 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 know, you want to win. win. Yeah, you did. Come on. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, definitely PlayStation happy. Cause that means hopefully more consoles, more copies of that game sold yeah, for their and system. Rumors are the PlayStation is already already or have, on the end of development for a new console already, uh, but that won't be out for a couple years apparently. So mm-hmm. no no worries about your current system going out of date quite yet. But uh, take the advantage of all those good games. Yeah, your local lots of deals. Downloadables I think, uh, and God of War is like ten bucks or fifteen bucks right now, yeah. and plenty of other games like. Spider Man was really good. You got that with for a whole console exclusive. It. Yeah, I think it was like two hundred bucks or two fifty for the console plus the video game plus the video game. Yeah, yeah so it was a definitely a great deal. And Black Friday, it, it, yeah, you definitely take advantage of it. And it definitely hit me in the heartstrings when I saw the little Stanley cameo. Oh, oh yeah, I was very like, cute. Oh. How far have you gotten in that game, by the way? I'm at thirty three percent, but I'm actually going off and doing all the side missions. Side they and take all a that. long time. Like there, there's a lot of work to like get all the backpacks to get all the the black cat like photographs and stuff I'm like got, that's a lot of work i've got my butt are handed you, to are you so catching pigeons at this point i've gone past the cat uh, catching pigeons i'm actually that's like so hard the it second really is. <laughs> the second time of locking up uh shocker oh yeah okay. so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm that far right. well good for you you're, you're definitely under the strength. Like, i definitely got a certain like oh this is this is a lot of work to do all these all these unlocking of things but and that's the thing unlocking of suits and special powers i'm like this is this is a lot of extra work but that's the thing that's what makes the game worth it because if not just content alone unless you get a bunch of dlc that you had to pay for yep. you want a game that's actually going to take your time and actually enjoy oh, playing. oh no yeah. this is definitely like easy 100 hour game if you do all these uh, extra missions and side oh, yeah. missions and dead redemption is, is even more than that so yeah. i mean i understand why all these are very good highly regarded games definitely worth it without having to pay that extra extra $60. Yeah. 
Okay, let's go into some entertainment news, folks. We have uh, news on Sister Act, the remake. This is going to actually call it Sister Act 3. Um, it is in development. Apparently, the Whoopi Goldberg is not going to be involved, uh, which is contrary to previous um, rumors that she was actually going to be having a cameo in the new Sister Act movie, but apparently she negotiations broke down. She has other she has other talk money, apparently. Uh, and so she's not going to be involved in Sister Act 2, but it, it is still going forward to develop it on the Disney plus platform which is their new streaming service so that's where you're going to see your new sister act movie so pretty much the check didn't clear yes um, that's kind of what it but uh, i'm hoping to see the other i don't know her, I, I know her name but i can't say to, to save my life but the uh, the sanderson sister oh yeah the uh, burger yeah the peggy hill yeah, voice yeah. of lady yeah i want to say it's like natalie something but uh yeah i hope she's in it because she was one of my i don't know anybody characters. who's who's not really working a lot right now is going to be happy to show up for a paycheck no you know, yeah so but and you like Professor Morgana was in that movie, isn't she? Who? Professor Morgana go from Harry Potter. Was it? Yeah, she's isn't she one of the nuns? Probably. Yeah, I think so. See? Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Okay, uh more entertainment news. We have our first look at the the first shot from the from the new uh Men in Black movie called Men in Black International with Chris Hemsworth and Tisa Thompson as Agent M in London. Um this is it. This is this picture we're showing on the on the video version of the podcast is them just pointing guns. They're wearing black suits and white shirts. Um, no ties. That's it. What's up with that? I know. They're going casual. Yeah. Their guns also look more plasticky to me. Like, there, there's some very interesting uh, plasticky lines here. I'm like, but I guess, you know. And it's decent a thing. size, too. They yeah. give them that cricket, like the Will Smith character. Yeah, yeah. That was always a weird kind of looking, which is the point, obviously. But yeah. still, yeah. Yeah. Um, these two had great chemistry on, on Thor Ragnarok. It was no surprise that they're going to get paired up to, again as another buddy uh, film. Um, and it's just, it, it's 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 Men in Black. And I think uh, Chris Hemsworth, the one that, that showed off the shot thing, um, about their, their two characters, we immediately drew our laser guns and took down the one of the largest crime syndicates in the city of London. Happy to say the streets of London are now safe again. You're welcome, world. So um, very... Fun stuff. So this is going to definitely be a continuation. It's not going to be a reboot. Not going to be anything like no, that. No, no. Every, everything's acknowledged. This is like, oh, this is an international version of the Men in Black. It's not just American uh, at this point. Cool. So there we go. So accents, uh, accents, accents, accents. Let's catch a lot of accents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, in other entertainment news, we have uh, a fairly deadline says that uh, Warner Brothers is going to do a Plastic Man movie. Um, which seems like one of the weirder characters to kind of build a movie around, but apparently they're they're banking essentially on uh, the success of Shazam, which is more of a lighthearted uh, superhero movie, and they're going in that direction. I think they're basically taking points from like Guardians of the Galaxy, in that a, a lighter, happier, funner movie they can do just as well relief. than just like the dark actiony stuff. Um, at least those are reports. So there you go. We got us like DC's like who do we got that's funny? Yeah, so, because Marvel's got their Deadpool, they got the Star Lord cracking jokes, even Thor's busting out some humor. We need some funny guy. Who it, do we got? It is funny, Plastic yeah. Man. Yeah, that'll work. I'm like he, he always liked the poor man's Reed, Reed Richards to me. He was always just kind of funky because he always had like that fishnet cross on on top, and of yeah. course the glasses that bend along with him. And, and we've all seen that. Plastic Man on um on the DC. On the CW. He's been an animated character. Uh, Was he live action? Yeah, he's on The Flash. Oh, I haven't seen I haven't seen that episode then, yeah. but he's he has been entertaining. He was one actually one of my first toys that I remember that like a DC character. Oh, he, yeah. he was like that uh, Stretch Armstrong version of him. K- a kind of the only thing the uh, the neck extended on him, but uh, there was it was just, just something different for its probably. time. Just but, the neck, huh? Yeah, well, just the neck. It was you know. But yeah, he's definitely no Reed Richards for sure. Even though no, he has yeah. the elastic abilities. Well, I mean, if it's fine. It's fine. If it's not, it's not. Because I remember it's, seeing him in it's the a word bet though animated series. He was actually like a thief, so he was kind of like Ant Man, but with stretchy powers. Right. Yeah, that's kind of well, sort of. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, but yeah, okay. And other also in the chimneys, they're also going to be making a Blue Beetle movie. Yeah. Um, so Warner Brothers is definitely doubling down on all their superhero movies. There's plenty of development like stories here. Where it's like, oh, we're developing a story around this character or this character. In this case, it's the Blue Beetle, who's one of the only uh, Hispanic characters uh, to have been developed as a superhero at this point. There's others, but they, honestly, they didn't get that recognition. There's this one that I remember in the Justice League called Aztec, which he was pretty much a Mexican Aztec tribal kind of thing. But his yeah. whole concept but they're was trying to, they're just trying to go with like, oh, look, we have his, we have ethnic characters in our library. We have like superhero movies. We got that Black people. Panther 
seem to do pretty well for Marvel, we can kind of do our own thing. That's what all of these kind of remind me of. But his his, uh, his history, though, on the Blue Beetle, he is a, uh, like a Mexican-born yep. character, but he goes and uh, he's actually... This, he helps uh, support an illegal alien who's <laughs> as a symbiote who bonds with him. Very similar. Very similar, but it's a technological uh, symbiote. Uh, but he, I think it involves the... Uh, the uh, like Egyptian, Egyptian kind of like technology because it's scarab. It's the whole um, beetle. Well, I thought it was, it's an alien from outer space that lands and I think and bonds with them. Yeah, and the the all these scarab uh, symbiotes are all from another planet. Yeah. and and so I don't know if it's necessarily related to e- Egyptian technology, but it is a tech based like so symbiote like character. Stargate-ish. Yeah. A little more Stargate ish than Egyptian ish directly. I wonder, yeah, I wonder if they're going to acknowledge the the first blue beetle. The like blonde dude, I forgot his name. No, nope, I don't recall. I, yeah. I've I've only ever seen the animated version where it's like the the Hispanic one. Yeah, so definitely I'm gonna check it out. Actually, yeah, like yeah. Blue Beetle. Because I'm definitely pro pro Blue Beetle at this point. Oh like, yeah, yeah, he's, we can he's see brown people too. Yeah, he's pretty much gonna be like uh, DC's Iron Man in a way because he he's like the modern version of the Iron Man where it's like a very. Uh, uh, what what do you call it? The uh, nanobot technology style thing, kind of in yeah, that respect, so. like the the way the the machine mm-hmm. um, symbiote bonds, bonds with, with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be definitely cool. Yeah. Okay. In other entertainment news, we have uh, oh Anne Hathaway is apparently the, we are talking about them doing a remake of the movie The Witches. Oh. Um, apparently, Anne Hathaway is, is being tagged as the front runner for the lead character, the uh, the High Witch, whatever her name was. Um, I never saw the movie. I always wanted to check it out. It's though. creepy as hell. Like it really is. Like it's supposed to be a kids movie, but it's like a bunch of like really ugly, like horrible like witches um, who are essentially trying to kill this kid, and they turn him into a, a rat. Um, wow. And he, yeah, and he has to like run around and escape and try to foil their plans. But it's definitely like a really creepy, kind of re- rather frightening children's movie. Is it like a Return to Oz? scary kind of like kids movie scary? It's set in the modern world, so it's like uh, it's like basically a child is. is by magic, he's turned into this mouse, um, and he he has to try to escape these witches because he's apparently part of their plan to take up the world. And he uncovers all their like horrible like secrets. Like they take off their wigs and they're just like bald and scabby everywhere. It's it's honestly one of the creepier like children's movies. Mm, I'm gonna check it up and yeah. Okay, but there you go. So we're gonna have uh, Anne Hathaway. Hathaway all grossed out. <laughs> there you go. That's the way to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Also, another entertainment news: We have uh, they're gonna do a twenty 21- one. A jump reboot, a reboot of a remake. Uh, so, and in this time, it's going to be apparently all ladies. There was an, an original concept that Twenty One Jump Street was going to do a crossover with the Men in Black series. Mm-hmm. Um, that didn't pan out, obviously. <laughs> um, but instead, they're going to do a, a redo of the Twenty One Jump Street concept with just women. And the two actresses that are in the lead of of, of being there is going to be Tiffany um, Haddish. She's supposed to be the the cop or something uh, or a teacher, <laughs> and um, She's supposed to be the Ice Cube. Uh, Aquanifia. Uh, who's what? the Asian girl. The Asian girl, basically. Uh, her name is Aquafina. That's literally what okay. it's, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's spelled not funky. Yeah, it's, 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 it's spelled differently. It's, it's, it's not the water. <laughs> she's, a, she's a female Asian comedian. Um, she was on the, uh, what was it called? The Rich Asian movie. And also on Ocean's 8 um, as, mm-hmm. as like their tech um, like yeah. person or whatever. Um, but she's a very funny you know, Asian Asian. It's comedian. President get Ali Wong. Yeah, so um, that, I think she's a little old, to be honest. Yeah. Not pregnant. Well, she's supposed to be uh, <laughs> she's supposed to be like the high school character. I'm like, yeah, mm. Young. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, I can see see how it pans out. Hopefully, you know. Yeah, like, like Tiffany is supposed to be the undercover teacher cop, and she's supposed to be the undercover um, student cop, uh, and that's their buddy cop. We'll see how it pans out. Yeah. You know, obviously, I'm all pro- Mixing it up, you know, mix the genders, mix the races, more diversity. I'm all about the diversity. Mix the races. Just ask his baby. Totally. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Oh, this was a little bit of sad news. We it's been a little while since we've been here on the show. Um, And in the meantime, uh, we apparently lost Daredevil. Uh, Netflix canceled the show, uh, and it was a complete surprise to absolutely everybody, including the actors, the directors, um, and the writers. The writers were like, "Hey, we're we're in the middle of like writing season four. What what the heck?" Um, everybody was absolutely surprised and there are plenty of like, uh, actors who are crying. Like this was, this is a complete surprise to me. Um, 
I'm, but I was happy to be like related to this show and all. We thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, but all the actors are definitely super, super surprised. Um, and, of course, and the latest rumor, which is what the story is about, is that um, Collider reporter Stephen Weintraub basically cites an anonymous source saying that it really wasn't Netflix's decision to cancel Daredevil and not make a fourth season, rather that it was Disney via Marvel who is who stopped production on the show and this kind of meshes with the concept uh, a lot of the rumors saying that disney plans to like remake these properties under their own banner under their own like production team and put it on disney plus remember disney plus is is a competing streaming service uh with a ton of content disney does plan to have a special dedicated marvel channel and they need content and it's kind of makes sense that they're going to want to like essentially redo these shows with their own actors with their own property so it's not related or or or, or leeching off netflix necessarily but because they know that these are already properties that are valuable and have a fan base well they definitely you know once again it's their toy box they could do yep. whatever they, they want can. with their that's, stuff that's it, yeah. but a, a, one of my rumors that i've heard or is that because of the content of it that it might possibly might not come to disney plus because it's very like more trying to in, name for the family oriented kind of stuff the the possibility of hulu going of the of the daredevil shows going to hulu because disney has okay. quite a bit of stock in it you know disney's so, like majority shelter in hulu as well if that is correct yeah so there's a possibility of them going into Hulu once again this is just a rumor meal just because uh, the way Disney also owns other studios like Hollywood Pictures and Touchstone to be able to make their rated PG-13 right. slash R content under the, that umbrella uh, but instead of putting in the Disney brand on it that way they can't say like that's Disney well, like technically right. that definitely but... does make sense as far as that being a possibility um, because they, they plan to develop the tele- or movie versions of these characters and they don't mm-hmm. want the cross branding to, to get confused um, plenty of opportunities for Disney to make money, but it, yeah. it seems like it's Disney who's kind of decided, oh no, we're taking these properties back. We don't care how much money you're throwing at us because uh, Daredevil was apparently Netflix's mo- fourth most watched show uh, mm-hmm. ever and it, consistently. Um, and so that it kind of makes sense like, oh no, why would Netflix want to cancel their best shows basically? And they don't. Uh, Disney does. So definitely take yeah. advantage, watch what you can before it goes bye bye because they well, are no, pulling. They're, well, not necessarily pulling the old shows, they're not just developing new ones basically because mm-hmm. Disney has, uh, Netflix has those rights. They made the production uh, investment in those, in those properties. So mm-hmm. it's theirs. But um, they're just not able to make any more without further licensing rights. So I'm hoping the rumor mill is correct and it hopefully goes to Hulu. Because it's we'll those see. shows were so yeah. good, how, except for of course, Mr. Danny Rand. But, <laughs> but even then, yeah. like, it's not the worst show in the universe. Like there are definitely plenty of worse shows, um, I, and that's why it made sense for people. Like oh, Iron Fist, we kind of get it. Nobody's really watching it. It's not the best show ever. Uh, Luke Cage, like oh, that doesn't quite make as much sense. But I guess. And then Daredevil was like oh, that makes no sense whatsoever. Mm-hmm. That's the best one. Yeah. Hans Limu in chat room just popped in saying sup y'all. Hey Hans. 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 <laughs> Hans Limu. Luma. Yeah. Hans as in Hans Gruber. That's yeah, what I always think that of that works. one from. Yep. But yeah. Um Disney with with the uh Marvel flag under them, they could definitely do whatever they want with whoever they want. Uh there's some other shows that have the possibility, but once again, uh, don't expect them to see them on Netflix. Yeah, uh, that, that's a, kind of what it is. Disney's definitely pulling all their stuff off of Netflix because they plan to put it on their own service, which mm-hmm. kind of makes sense uh, from their point of view as a consumer. It's like, oh, another thing to subscribe to. Yeah. Okay, uh, more entertainment news and development stuff. Apparently, again, uh, Dis- uh, Marvel and Disney are, are fast-tracking a Shang-Chi uh, superhero movie. So they're going to be developing their their first Asian protagonist superhero movie. Uh, the studio has set uh, Chinese American scribe David Callahan to write the screenplay, and then later that Marvel is working uh, already looking at the number of Asian and Asian American directors who want to do something with a potentially monumental concept. We talked about this already, and like, yeah, uh, Marvel's kind of saying, "Oh, that Black Panther movie really resonated with our ethnic uh, viewers." Well, so let, let's try this again. People do we get yeah, to work with? Let's try this again with some other ethnicity, uh, and this is kind of the result. And and. and it's like, it's like they kind of had a choice, like, oh, do we go like full on Asian and like promote stereotypes, or do we whitewash this and get in trouble there? And it, they're just going all Asian. They're just flipping yeah. that Rolodex of race and see where it lands. It's like, yes, we have a property. There's there's an actor there. Let's try this out. Like people like you know tr- crouching dragon, hidden dragon, right? Right. Yeah. The, well, that was the whole thing that, that people like that were meeting was. That was the whole thing that they were expecting 
quote unquote, for uh, Iron Fist to go. Sort of. But then they went, you know, Mr. Like, no, no, he's he's actually white. I could, he he is, but you don't have to keep him that way if you don't want to. <laughs> We're all really okay with that. We're all cool with yeah. it, you know, like, you know. Let's get somebody who actually knows martial arts. We're okay. we're, exactly. we're really fine with like that particular change. Yeah. Oh, I really don't know much about Shang Chi to be honest. No, uh, I looked him up. And he's like he's probably about like a martial art. Like it's a very heavy Asian inspired martial arts where it's like oh his dad is a criminal mastermind and he has a whole criminal empire and he's raised his son um, essentially to be like a special assassin. Um, and, and on his first mission out uh, as a teenager, he he basically comes to realize that his dad's the bad guy. And he, he becomes determined to bring his father's criminal empire down, and that's that's the whole like plot of the of a of his series arc. That was kind of like Ninja Assassin, if you ever seen that movie. Sort of, sort of, yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, quite a bit like that, to be honest. Yeah, where he becomes a little bit disillusioned and he uses his martial arts training to get you know yeah. to fight against the evils of his father and his empire. So we'll see. Hey, uh, the Guardians is a prime example. Nobody knew that was going to take off and yeah. be big. So ho- hopefully, this one will, will be just as big, if not yeah. better. We'll than- have to wait and see. Okay. Um, oh, sad news. Apparently, Sylvester Sloan is putting down his boxing gloves as Rocky. He apparently, he uh, said this via Instagram that uh, Creed 2 is the last time he's going to be taking on the role of Rocky. He, he said that after 40 years, he thanks everybody for, for watching his character through all his, the character's arc developments, uh, but that he, he felt like he's expressed the role as much as possible, and that movie is going to have the last uh, viewing of Rocky. Yeah, Rambo still happening. Yeah, yeah, that's, what, that's, that's my example. Like, yeah, you said the same thing about Rambo until yeah. they, they backed up that money truck to you. Uh-huh, check yeah. cleared. Um, we'll see because that was the whole concept of the first Creed because there was that scene where he was like in a hospital thing or being pulled into an ambulance. Like, oh, they're gonna see, kill him off, kind of like the same yeah, thing yeah. as as Rocky's old trainer Mickey, and you know, pass the baton if you will down. But eh, did you watch Creed too? Nope. Uh, I saw Creed I heard one. But Very good nice. things. I, I hear Creed two good is like, things. oh, it, it's nice. It's just not as good as Creed one. Uh, there's definitely a little more like uh, struggles with the plot a little bit. But like, okay, it's a boxing movie. What do you want? The, well, the whole thing is that, like our kids are fighting our fight because you know, yeah. your dad killed my dad, so I'm going to kill you. Th- kill your dad. Sort of. Yeah. That, that, you. Like, Vengeance, that, that kind of motivational <laughs> plot is like, oh, that doesn't really make sense. Yeah. That I mean to me. Yeah. Like that father you didn't really like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. Because if 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 big if they make Creed three, yep, obviously with no Rocky. Oh no, they're just gonna truck. Just like Rocky will come back as long as they pay him enough. Or like, they because Sylvester is not so like idealistic. He's like, oh no, I'm gonna I'm gonna no money for me. I have principles. No, he's he just, he's Hollywood. Just hit him with a truck or something, yeah. or you yeah. know, or or he just gets called to the expend expendables or yeah, something remember, like that. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Crossover. Yeah. Okay, last bit of entertainment news, folks. We have Cowboy Bebop is getting a live action series on Netflix. All these development cycles, folks, uh, including like anime becoming live action. This one here uh, is probably the most exciting for me personally in that I love Cowboy Bebop. It's a great space action anime with like amazing music soundtracks. So it's going to be interesting to see how they pull that in, into a live action version of the show. Uh, but apparently the uh, creators, anime creators, original uh, writer, uh, don't tell me when you say it, Shinichiro Watabi, uh, Watabi is going to be involved in co- and consulting, so hopefully it'll, it won't suck. I mean, like uh, Death Note. Death Note or uh, Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the uh, Shell, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah those are unfortunate <laughs> examples. Uh, although Bleach wasn't half bad. Um, I haven't watched that one, though. But it's okay. It's, yeah. It kind of it essentially does the first like few episodes of the show. Um, and like, okay, that's, that's kind of a season one kind of arc without getting too into it. It's like the first, I don't know, want to say six episodes that kind yeah. of takes place and it smushes together without as much detail. Um, but overall, it's like not, it's pretty faithful to the original content. And it kind of gives you that same action-y vibe. Did you ever watch, or not watch, but did you see the, I don't know if it was a cosplay or whatnot, but uh, Cumberbatch was dressed up as the, the dude with the hair from oh, Cowboy no. Bebop? I don't think, I, oh, no, don't, don't recall ever yeah. seeing that, to be no, honest. Th- yeah, I wasn't sure what was going on. I thought that was going to be the live action. Like, oh, Cumberbatch is going to is going to be the the dude with the hair for Cowboy Bebop. I'll be like, it could be. It I, looked really good. It I don't, looked I don't, really well. If they give him enough money, I don't doubt that he could, he could pull it off. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. it for the entertain or for the news section. We have a bunch of trailers, including some great game trailers that came out of the uh, Game Awards. We're going to, of course, begin with the biggest trailers out there right now: Avengers Endgame. Uh, we're going to turn off the sound because otherwise we get tagged for copyright infringement. But it's a, you're watching the, the video version of this, um, or 
hopefully you've seen this already because this is an amazing trailer. Yeah, it starts off with Tony Stark in space with uh, just recording a goodbye wow. message. Um, no, I just noticed right now because it's at fifty five million views at yep. the time when it first came out. The first couple hours, it was already at like five million views. Oh, no, it's definitely the biggest trailer uh, on the internet at this moment, uh, and everybody understands why. Even though this movie isn't coming out until two thousand and nineteen, so you got a couple months. Yeah. Um, it's still very interesting. Kind of touches on like, oh, the aftermath of, of that last movie. It is a really like good the job. Snap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, although it's not called the snap, it's called like the decimation now. Apparently, they gave it an official name. I like the snap better. Like it's the very, snap. it's very descriptive. Um, and it's 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 interesting. Very interesting. Trailer. It kind of. I'm going to skip to the end just because you get to see a couple things here, including um, Hawkeye. Ronin. Yeah, Hawkeye turns into Ronin. Um, if you're in the comic, it's basically a dark version of Hawkeye, who's a murdering assassin kind of guy yeah. who really does murder people on a regular basis. I loved all the memes that they came out with this, especially when they showed uh, uh, Hawkeye as Ronan. Yeah. He's like, where you been? Plain tag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it infers that, oh, something <laughs> happened with Hawkeye that makes him a murdery dude. And then towards the end, you get a little... Um, you get a post credit yeah. for a trailer. A trailer <laughs> uh, where it's like, oh, uh, Captain America's talking with Black Widow. And oh, who's outside on the video monitor? Ant-Man, who yeah. they had already thought was dead, basically. Yeah, because a lot of uh, people were yeah. like, well, supposedly Miss uh, Miss Marvel was going to be the one that's going to be saving Same the world. Everybody. But since oh, it's, it's going to be no, Ant-Man. And that, and that definitely ties into the things you've heard from actors mm -hmm. um, in that, oh, no, the, the microverse is going to play a really big part in solving this whole situation. And we're all like time travel through the microverse well you notice uh, especially that one kind of like joke they did on Ruff ruffalo because they yeah, quote yeah. unquote fired him where he says <laughs> the thing yeah he's all you're fired because he he talks yeah. he, he, but you do see him in the trailer actually yeah. you, see, you see mark ruffalo uh, as an idea like oh yeah, yeah. He, he's still in the movie he's not really fired folks yeah. it was a joke uh next trailer up is gonna be captain marvel this is the second trailer the one where she hits the old lady favorite part bam yep and the old lady hits her back with some yeah. awesome parkour moves. Yeah. So, so and it's like, oh yeah, it's the scree, uh, the Cree versus the uh, scrolls. The scrolls. Yeah. Uh, and it's a very interesting trailer. You get to see young Samuel L. Jackson. I think they did an amazing job with that CGI. By the way, he looks really. It looks very clean. Very believable yeah, that like he's of that era. He doesn't look plastic. He doesn't look like Superman uh, with, with his fake, fake mustache. mustache that's disappearing. No, he looks really good. Um, like yeah, good job on that, guys. Yeah, they even gave him the uh, more or less like her costume with the the helmet thing and the, with the mohawk thing that she's rocking. Yeah, there you go. They get the she green version. Powers. Later on, we see the red version of the yeah. exact same thing. Um, and there's definitely plenty of hints of like, oh, brainwashing, being abducted, recovered memories. Um, and yeah. you see Coulson in there too. Eventually, no, yeah, he definitely comes back as a character um, in this particular. But remember, this uh, is prequel. So this is before he quote unquote died. Disappeared. Only he didn't really die. He came back for his own show. Exactly. Yeah, they spun him off. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so it's definitely going to be good. Uh, that's although I think they kill him again later. They kill him again in, in the uh, in the Agents of Shield movie. But that, if I'm right, that's going to come out first before Endgame, right? For Avengers, because they had to connect it to what? What? what uh, you mean Captain um, Marvel? Marvel? Yeah. I think it's March and April. When does I forget when Captain Marvel comes out? Go back quick and yeah, we can look. Um, uh, studio trailer. No let's date. See. I don't remember actually. I want to say March. We can uh, look it up. It has to be April. No, wait, March, April. Yeah, because uh, Captain Marvel. Marvel release date. No, I saw the March eight. Yeah, so March, April. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you got to be able to watch that first. So. And July 5th, because eventually that's, they haven't put a trailer out for it yet, but uh, Far From Home with the Spider Man movie coming out. Yeah, they were so. supposed to come out this weekend. It did not, though. So Yeah, because that was the kind of rumor for last week on Wednesday. They're like, oh, they're going to put out the um, uh, Avengers uh, trailer, and it didn't happen. But now no, it did. So yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, next trailer is to be the Umbrella Academy. It's a teaser um, and stars uh, Juno. That actress. Uh, it's actually, it's probably a re it's a, actually a really good trailer. And if it had him in for like Captain Marvel and uh, for for uh, the Avengers Endgame, um, this pro big contender actually because yeah. it's very superheroish, but it's a darker superhero story, um, and it's definitely more um, oriented towards like this weird like um, broken version of superheroes where the you know some rich old guy essentially adopts a bunch of superhero kids. You mean and, like X Men? 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so things are really go badly. I'm yeah. like, they grow up and it's, it's the after version of like, Oh, what being a superhero or doing or hurting people on a regular basis with superpowers does to you mentally and how it breaks your family and how it affects your family, social dynamics. And it's, it's, it's a very kind of broken person story. I um, mean, it's a definitely a little bit darker than like regular superhero stories, but it's also on Netflix. It's I got to dig those rotten masks February. though with all of them rocking the domino mask yeah. with the whiteouts. It was just like, it's like a Robin school or something. Sort of. Yeah. This is another superhero movie a trailer. It's for called Brightburn. Um, the premise essentially is that what if Superman was evil as a kid? Yeah. And that's essentially what this is. Like they really do set up the same way they do Superman. Um, it's like, it's Martha. It's basically Martha Kent. We wanted to have a baby. We couldn't. Something falls from the sky and we find a, a, a baby in like this alien artifact. And it really tries to set up to, to, to be the Superman origin story. But something goes wrong. Like the kid starts acting weird and he's, he starts like trying to get back towards his ship and like things get really dark and red very quickly. Um, yeah, very exorcist demonic kind of sort possession. Of. It kind of has that vibe of like the exorcist vibe with Superman. Yeah, but it was just hard for me because I saw Elizabeth Banks and every time I see her, I think of comedy. So I was like, yeah. I was waiting for the joke to happen. Well, he's also like, a comedy actor, the, the yeah. husband in the movie. Like he's he was on like uh, at, uh, Parks and Rec. Or some other one. I no, remember. He, I've seen him in some other else. movie. Yeah, he's in something else. Another big guy. I want to say Strange Things. Well, that could be somebody else. No, it's definitely somebody else as well. But he's that guy's definitely been yeah. in the comedies and and. But yeah, that part where which she the you lady see him gets in the mask. On, it's yeah. a red mask and like he's a do, cape. Do, do, do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, okay, that's what they're going for. Yeah. Um, next one is going to be the video game trailer. I actually think some of these video game trailers that came out from the um, Game Awards mm -hmm. are better than most movie and uh, movie trailers. Oh, yeah. Some including definitely got your attention. Yeah, Far Cry uh, New Dawn. Nudity. Far Cry New Dawn. Mm -hmm. um, it's essentially post-apocalyptic Far Cry. And if you've ever played that game, um, you can see how that really does work well with that open world. Kind of do whatever you want to. Kind of... Um, very, sandbox game very mad max but with actual vegetation yeah. and color it definitely doesn't have the great vibe of of like other fallout games like mm -hmm. fallout as a series but i think the far cry system works well with that post-apocalyptic vibe um and the trailer definitely de appears and it's like oh some people are doing really well and other people are just psychos who want to murder their way um through that uh, yeah, and, so, and their looks on it. I, for a second i thought they were clones but they, they, they just look more like yeah for a second yeah or, they're just they look related. Yeah, it's a game. I'm <laughs> they could have made them look different than they wanted to, yeah. but they're, they're going for that twins thing. Which um, I love the whole animal connection here, too. So you could have the animals be pretty much like your familiars that help you out. Like in that case, that, that boar that kills the bad guy, but he's also your buddy. Yeah, and they've done <laughs> that first person like vibe of like, um, you know, Fallout or, or some other game. Yeah. And also like including car racing. So I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, that's a that's definitely a choice. I'm like, it's so it, it seems like it might be an okay game. Um, I haven't really fallen in love with Fallout in a very long time. This def next one is going to be The Outer World um, by Obsidian and Private Division. I got the feel from it of the uh, Fallout style kind of thing. It's like, supposed to be Fallout in space, basically. Yeah, because the guy's in the capsule. He's like, you good? You know what's happening? You going to explode? No, we're good? All right, let's come on now. Yeah, they <laughs> kind of go with the, vibe, with like the humor from mm -hmm. fallout um with in space and so i'm gonna skip ahead a little bit just to like you so you can see some on the video oh, version the commercialism the commercialism the like the environments the things aren't quite right but also like the open world opportunity to talk to characters and do different storylines like choosing the corporation or the rebels mm -hmm. um and a bunch of all the other concepts but it, it's a very interestingly stylized um version of the story yeah. but you still get that uh fallout vibe definitely definitely it almost gave me the um the Borderlands kind of feel to it too. A little bit in like the humor and some of the artwork. Yeah, yeah. But definitely looks good. If first person shooters, man. If it wasn't for like Fortnite being as big as it is, this is just giving you like an alternative. I'm surprised they haven't just made a super merger and did like a like a what they called it, Mugen, and just put them all in just one platform. Oh yeah, uh, definitely can be the case. Yeah, like all those wow. nice like, aliens characters. Yeah. Looks very pretty. Uh, next trailer is going to be Anthem. Oh, then this one has gotten a lot of hype, like tons of hype from the creators of the, of, of the game, basically. Um, 
again, another sh- shooter game, but you have RPG upgrade aspects, so both the characters and according to also to the suits. Um, you get to see damage notifications, so it definitely has that RPG aspect to it as well. And just like the mech action fighting here in the story, what was emphasized before, now it's the storyline of like, you're part of like this colony who's just struggling to get by, and there's a betrayal by, uh, by, by, by other humans who've, uh, um, ally themselves with the alien entity and forces that are creating all these monsters. Um, so like, it's a very interesting concept. It's like a combo of uh, halo and exo squad. If you ever bit, saw yeah. that. Yeah. So it, it's really cool. Like the, the details on, on the cut scenes, it's like, I'm surprised these aren't their own films. Yep. yep. They're, they're so good. No, they're so definitely, good. definitely Visually, pretty enough. Just and a amazing. lot of this is actually from the in-game engine. It's not just mm-hmm. from like a, a, you know, cut scene that's being made. Yeah. Um, and like the mech suits are absolutely gorgeous. And there's, there's actually yeah. about 20 or 30 minutes worth of gameplay footage out there on the internet, um, from like the various cons and you just, just watching how beautiful, uh, these scenes are re- rendered. It, it, it's gorgeous. Can't wait till it comes out. Okay. Uh, last trailer that I thought was really interesting, Mortal Kombat 11. And again, this is a, um, more adult graphic version of it. You're not going to hear any of the cursing because we have the sound Let off. It, but gets. it is definitely bloody uh, and very visceral, which is what the series is mostly known. It's kind of what they bank on. Yeah. It's kind of the thing they're saying, oh, that's how we differentiate ourselves from everyone else is all the blood and gore. Obviously, you can't appreciate it as much because visually it looks awesome. But the, the music, I was so hoping for the movie, like oh, the techno yeah. music, like do 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 I don't doubt that it's going to be a setting on like something you can unlock as you play. Yeah. This time, the big thing seems to be like, oh, you can use weapons. Everybody gets a weapon, or like grabbable weapons from the environment. Yeah. And even though this is even though this isn't really apparently like game footage this is very much cutscene footage yeah um it still looks very good um yeah i played mortal kombat x or 10 if you will since this is number 11 so i just can't wait to the other characters they'll show because if they do anything like the way they did it in the uh uh justice league gods among us or the sort other of. Mortal Kombat, they'll, yeah, yeah. they'll introduce more characters in it the way they've done yeah. it with pop culture they introduced like the I think it was called the Nightmare Pack, where they had characters from like horror movies, like Jason, Leatherface, Freddy Krueger. Yep, that's the idea. Like you basically could just do new skins over yeah. different characters, give them different moves, and you can kind of keep the life of a uh, fighting game like this up with, with, with DLC. And you can see this is like the evolutionary form of the characters, because obviously Raiden. First time I've ever seen a, a Raiden character with the red lightning instead of the white. And of course, as you can see, it, the clan of the uh, a scorpion clan if you will of the scorpion people because the first character it was never like the the only scorpion character even like sub-zero yeah. there's his clan there's been other versions there's been female versions have been guy versions uh the uh, they killed off the original and, then, and the, the brother the, took you over get the watcher version here like yeah that's the new character and of course now. the uh decked out shao khan that's going to be like pretty much a playable character yeah. if you pre-order and that's how they kind of get yeah that's how they do okay so those are all our trailers um which trailer worked the best for you man which one won? Oh my god uh, between a game okay between games and movies yeah let's sure. see why not um i want to the hype for avengers endgame i i want to see for the movie wise as for the video game Honestly, I want to say with Anthem. Anthem just visually looks amazing with the mech suits and everything. It just makes me want to learn more about it. Cool. Um, for me, it's definitely going to be Captain Marvel. Like I've seen the Avengers before. Um, I haven't seen Captain Marvel, even though I kind of know the storyline. It's going to be interesting to see, like, essentially a whole new slew of characters. You get to see the scroll introduced um, for the very first time, or well, not the very first time, but like as a, as a major villainish character. I'm mm-hmm. definitely going to see them. I'm more excited to see Captain Marvel than I am Avengers. Um, just cause like you kind of, it, they're a little more mysterious about what Avengers is going to do with all those characters. But Captain Marvel is a much smaller kind of story content. I'm, I wonder how they're going to commercial her, like, especially with like toys and all that. Cause that was the big thing with the Marvel, uh, like every licensing. Else. What do you mean? Well, well, especially being a female, the way the DC try to cash in as much as Wonder Woman merchandise as they could. I'm getting ready for the like Captain Marvel dolls you know, oh, I see. and all that. Well, yeah, they're going to do the merchandise thing in the same area. They like mm-hmm. money. Yeah. Why not? Uh, as far as video games go, I'm definitely more looking forward to the Outer Worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a huge fan of Fallout, and I think um, a space version of this will work very well. 
Um, the other ones were really good. Anthem is probably going to become second for the video game parts that I'm excited for. Um, but it's also a very sh- first person shooter. And I'm not as yeah. big a fan of first person shooters as I am of RPGs. Um, even though I'm more than happy to have a combo of them too, as long as the RPG mechanics are full and I get lots of upgrade options and different playstyle options, I'm more than happy for those. So that, those are the winners. We, we both agree on a lot of stuff. So there you go. It was like the, my friend talked about, like, if you think about it, all video games are RPGs. He's like, really? Well, think about it. Are you really a plumber? <laughs> are you uh, really in the jumping? respect that you're taking on a role, sure. <laughs> there are RPGs in that respect. They don't have RPG mechanics, so that's fine. Until you touch the flower, then you get the fire ability, and mm-hmm. then you get the feather, and you get the cape. And yes, <laughs> I hear what you're saying. I won't, I won't argue with you, because it's a whole thing in the Little RPG community where it's like, oh, what's Little RPG? What isn't? Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> that will be like a three-hour three discussion, man. Like, you're really like, here's the list. Here's oh, my no. proof. Yeah. My best is cup mix upside yeah. your head. <laughs> no. And that's it for the show, folks. We're all finished. Thanks for hanging out with us. Big Thanks show. for watching. It was a nice, long show. Uh, so much out even play. though technically it's like it, it's a it's still a shorter show a lot of great information we're just happening mm-hmm. really quickly um and if you like the podcast and want to help us in any way shape or form to help support us you can find out all the ways to do so at do it at geekbytespodcast.com slash support there we go drop a buck or, or just say hello or share the podcast yeah. there's yeah. a lot of free ways to help us <laughs> to grow to show your support um again, your thanks, for, thanks for listening for watching for Geek Bites Podcast though I am Ramon Mejia I'm Edgardo Costa and remember folks we can see you again remember to go geek out about something bye everybody <laughs>